Martin Garden Centre. We're here with Mark Smith, our garden guru, on February's edition of Green Finger Tips. So, Mark, what are we going to talk about today? Well, well uh, it's February now and uh, plenty of colour appearing in the garden centre. Um, if you've got any uh, drab areas uh, in the garden, it's looking very, very uh, um, bland, uh, a bit depressing. You know, winter time can be a bit depressing. Plenty of colour at the moment now. Right. Um, we've got. Um, uh, prims, which uh, is a traditional winter uh, bedding, very, very hardy. These can be put out now uh, and these will flower and flower and flower right the way up to when the summer bedding's uh, available oh. later on in the season. And the great thing about these prims, you can actually leave them in, in the garden and they'll come back next year. They make a slightly bigger clump and you can just leave them in and they'll make a bigger clump for next mm. year. Plenty of flower, lots of... Um, unusual uh, colours and uh, interesting thing we are in a in a new era of uh, less packaging yeah. and uh, trying to uh, save the planet and in actual fact these particular uh, prims are planted straight into the pack uh, so there's no extra pots in there there's no extra plastic pots it's just straight into the pack that you get them in mm. and you've got the nice carry handle there so you can carry home yeah. which i think is a great uh, thing uh, you know we um, as a Horticulture is seen as a uh, green subject. We ought to be doing our bit, you know, to reduce the yeah, packaging as well, not just. Uh, uh, it's a good food. idea. Yeah. yeah, and because it's a new year, we're into a new year. We do get lots of um, new varieties of plants starting to come through. A lot of these I saw yeah. at a trade show last June and uh, now we're starting to see those filter into the garden centre, right. so it's really nice to see these. This is a new variety of uh, primrose. primrose yeah. This is uh, raspberry ripple. Uh, gorgeous uh, coloration on the flower, um, edged uh, off this uh, raspberry colour off the, uh, the edge, and it's got a, um, a, a coloration just around the petal. It's really nice, it being a bicolour, rather yeah. than just a straight, flat colour mm, like that. Yeah. Um, I prefer the bicolours. They look bigger as well, don't they? Yeah, it's again, it's because it's with the breeding <coughs> and the try and, oh. uh, not only do they try and uh, breed new colours, they try and produce bigger flowers and, mo um, and mo <coughs> more of them as well. So raspberry ripple, mm. great uh, new variety. If you are uh, a fan of, because uh, everybody says to me, one of the the question is, what's the difference between a polyanthus and a primrose? Right, OK. And a polyanthus flowers on a it's stalk. Big, yeah, She yeah. flowers on a stalk, whereas the primrose is uh, flat to the uh, to the um, rosette and the, and the leaves. Yeah. So you get a, a flower spike yeah. rather than a rosette like you do right, on the primrose. Okay. Uh, this is another uh, great new variety. This is a polyanthus fire dragon. I love the name. I love the colour. Uh, it's a very fashionable colour, this mm. burnt orange. Um, again, around the edges of the leaf there, this really fiery, uh, bright orangey yeah. red. And there's a few more coming through, so there's... It, Absolutely. Quite... It, the the yeah. flower head will get a lot larger. Yeah. And, uh, again, flower Another heads... Another one there, yeah. Uh, ...poking up. So, again, this will flower right until uh, the uh, summer bedding starts. And you can mm. keep this in again. Very mm. hardy. Plant this out now. Even if we we get a second uh, flush of snow or cold yeah. weather, won't affect it at no. all. Oh, so right. something like that would really, really brighten up um, a garden so at the moment. So lots of colour for this time of year. Yeah. So you have uh, we'll have to mention the fact <laughs> that you have uh, planted this uh, container these are new containers this is actually not wood this no. is what's called fiber clay uh, so it won't break yeah. in the frost but it looks lovely uh, against these prunes you've done a cracking job there Liz. <laughs> you, you really have uh, we'll give you a job and um, it, it looks something as simple as that uh, really uh, you know you could have that planted uh, just by the front door mm. or by the kitchen and uh, really brighten up uh, the garden and almost into yeah, there's a, another one here that there's I've another done. container yeah and <laughs> what um, i did earlier <laughs> the, lots of um the containers i think these days are uh, a lot nicer yeah. they're a lot more interesting it's all this vintage stuff coming the, back again yeah, yeah absolutely the colors are great mm. and, the, and like i say it's the vintage stuff that seems to be the uh, the most popular the, yeah. rather than the plain flat boring greens and blues that they used to have years and years mm. ago uh, pots are a lot more interesting yeah. you can dress them up uh, with uh, yeah. plants so, oh, mention that the uh, 
the um, the polyanthus does come up with uh, uh, in a bigger size if you want something oh, a little right. bit more instant rather than the smaller ones plant that as it is you can leave it in the pot or or put it in a slightly bigger in a slightly bigger pot and you've got instant uh, color there so right. fabulous um, range of colors at the moment and because we are moving into that season it's mm. not quite spring yet but uh, we're, we're we're getting uh, there now. Spring bulbs. So I've ah. just got a, just a small selection. selection. Yeah. Um, we've got a, a huge selection of uh, bulbs here at, at Mark Eaton, but I've just put a few together just yeah. to um, show you what we, we have got. Dwarf iris, uh, great for a rockery, great for a pot. Yeah. Um, lots and lots of flower, and these flower a lot earlier on in the season than uh, regular flag. Uh, iris mm. so you can uh, really start off the season with these uh, dwarf um, iris stay very very neat just leave the bulbs in and they'll come back year after year and uh, and just multiply you did like this variety yes. of uh, <laughs> tulip this one's called is uh, named after you little beauty um, <laughs> so, um, gorgeous uh, cerisi pink and it's very open flower you did point out the fact that it was a, a, yeah, it sort a, of curled out rather than than a cup uh, yeah. size yeah the a lot of the dwarf uh, tulips are like that where the flowers are more open yeah uh, and they, they look very exotic the colors are yeah, sort like of, that's a new variety mm. little beauty but it's a, a gorgeous color mm. now this is an old favorite of mine we've probably seen this on the show before yeah but this is an enemy uh, blander this is a yeah. blue one this one's called blue so shades a small, flower, small yeah. one doesn't get any taller than that oh. acts as ground cover yeah and the great thing about anemones, it um, when it does finally come into flower, the flowers completely cover all the foliage, so you just see a rosette of flower and no foliage at all. Again, you leave that in and it naturalises where it'll form a big, big clump eventually and you just get carpets and carpets of flower. You can get these in blue, uh, white and pink. Just a glorious uh, flower, and it gives you value for money yeah. in terms of uh, the amount of uh, flower it gives you, and the and the per the long period. Yeah. This is uh, this is a great one. Uh, oh. This is one of my uh, favourites. This is uh, fritillaria again. You might have seen this on the show before. Stakes head fritillaria. Mm -hmm. All the flower heads come out like little snakes heads. Oh, uh, really? They've got the coloration and the scaling of a, a snake skin. <laughs> yeah, and they just look really <laughs> funky, and all oh, the children oh, love yeah. it. And yeah. uh, you get them in uh, different colours, uh, but uh, the children absolutely love that when you say it's snakes head uh, fritillaria. <laughs> yeah. And you was uh, questioning the uh, why uh, we've got another daffodil there. We've got we've got daffodils behind yeah. us. That one's the, the popular one called yeah. Tate to Tate, which is a dwarf uh, daffodil. All the dwarf daffodils come out a lot sooner oh, right. than the regular yeah. tall yeah. Uh, daffodils. And uh, so the, they give you the instant colour, very early flowering yeah. as well. But uh, the one that you, you like the look of was this uh, other dwarf daffodil, new variety, or newish variety, Rip Van Winkle, which is a, <laughs> uh, a, a dwarf double flowered uh, variety. Uh, I love that. It stays very, very compact, doesn't yeah. get too, too right. tall. But again, great for containers, uh, great <laughs> for borders. And also, with a lot of these bulbs, um, a lot of the dwarf fir varieties, you can actually plant them up in containers, oh, right. um, yeah. along with your oh. prims and your polyanthus and your pansies yeah. and things like that. And they would come up in, in amongst the prims and give you a, a fantastic oh. show. Yeah. Really, really cheery time of the year um, in February, because everything just starts with oh, an explosion. How do they last, with, you know, once they've flowered? Well, they'll, they keep they'll, flowering for so long. Yeah, I mean, depending on the variety, these mm. these uh, dwarf daffodils, which are the early flowering yeah. ones. Then you've got the dwarf tulips, which are a little bit later on. Uh, so you could start from now with yeah. some of the daffodils, and they'll flower right and up plant to the them out so as they flower at different, different times. times, and they'll flower yeah. from um, from now until about the end of May. So oh, right. a long, long it period. Is. So for value for money, uh, you can't beat. Um, and they come up each year. They come up each. Year, yeah. so it's not like you're having well to plant them it. well worth it <laughs> yeah. if you plant them in a in a border you just plant them yeah. leave them forget about them you don't mm. have to do anything with them that's, uh, if, that's easy <laughs> yeah it's, if you plant them in a container uh, obviously when you take the bedding out if you need to take the yeah. bedding out you have to save the bulbs but yeah. very easy to look after prims mm. are very easy to look after 
So, Mark, um, are we going to look at Plant of the Month for February? Yeah, yeah, it's just over here, Liz. Yeah. That's, uh... So, this one, uh, Heliborus niger, uh, is commonly known as uh, Christmas Rose. Uh, it's beautiful, one of my favourite uh, top three uh, plants. It uh, flowers from the first week of December right the way through to uh, April time. And it's very hardy, very tough, stands up to really, really cold weather. And like a lot of winter flowering plants, will um, give you real good value for money. Very long flowering period, mm. easy to look after. And the great thing about Heliborus niger, a lot of people have problems with uh, places in the garden for shade. And Heliborus niger is just brilliant for oh, shade. Right. A very dark uh, spot under a tree, anything like that. A little that space up. Again, great in a uh, pot for a present, if you want mm. to give a pre um, as a present. Like with the uh, Prims and the Polyanthus, there are new varieties. Yep. So uh, the new varieties are... <clears throat> Uh, this particular one is a variety called uh, Heliborus Emma. Uh, so it's pinky uh, red in bud, opening to a yellowy white. Again, a coarser leaf, uh, but they're always bred to uh, form clusters of flowers. Oh, so right. a much more impressive yeah. uh, display of flowers. And the other one that I've got, which is a more of a uh, pure, bright uh, white right. one. Again, clustered flowers. That seems mm. to be the, the way that they're breeding these these days. Uh, it's called Icebreaker. Right. So uh, pure, pure, brilliant white, very, very yeah. large flowered. Uh, but as the uh, picture can uh, show, it actually develops lots and lots of flowers yeah, in a, in a yeah. cluster and gives you a, a much better show. Mm. Either either would be fine in a in a container or yeah. in the uh, garden. Again, same uh, as the common one under trees in a shady spot, and it's yeah, just it's plant, brilliant. leave, and forget about. It. There's no care whatsoever. You don't have to deadhead them or anything like that. Wow. It's a very very easy plant to look after. The only th uh, oh. thing I will say about Heliborus, they usually are quite pricey. Uh, plants. I mean, these are new, so new plants tend to be a lot more expensive than the yeah. older varieties. The first uh, Heliborus that I showed you, the Niger, yeah. that was uh, four ninety nine. Uh, right. This is twelve ninety nine. Yeah. But I think you get your value for money uh, in paying that little bit these more. these come up each year. Each year, and you're getting a bigger plant yeah. anyway than the, the first one, but you, they come back year after year, mm. but these are bred really well, so you get value for money. Yeah. Plenty of flower Lots and of look glorious. So and they attract bees? And they do Bee attract friendly. bees, uh, even when the weather, I mean, it's a glorious sunny day today. I mean, mm. even when the weather does start to pick up and yeah. you get those temperature heights into double figures, you start to get bees and it's nice to have plants that are in flower that the bees yeah, attract will get, uh, yeah. track. So, yeah, well worth uh, having uh, something like oh, this yeah. in the uh, garden. And if you do, yeah. if you do as the uh, year progresses, pick the plant of the month every single month. It's only one plant a month. You will get a all year round colour and a really mm. good show yeah. all year round. So uh, well, it's well worth it. It yeah. is well, yeah, absolutely. And just behind us, we have been mentioning about uh, spring and yeah. the signs, and they're always one of the most popular uh, bulbs uh, that oh. people go for are snowdrops. Yeah. Now it says on the label Galanthus there and that's yeah. the botanical name of uh, snowdrops. Uh, people always say have you got any snowdrops even though you've got a picture of snowdrops oh, there right. but uh, a little bit of a mistake by the growers them. there uh, by putting the botanical right. name on there it should really say snowdrops but always buy them in the green you know, they talk about buying uh, snowdrops in the green. These are growing. You can uh, see that they're growing. Yeah. Normally, people have problems with bulbs, dry bulbs in the autumn. They plant snowdrops and they don't come up. Uh, um, right. But it's uh, what I tend to do at home. Yeah is actually plant the bulbs in a pot like this with some compost and they usually always shoot. Just ordinary compost. Ordinary multi-purpose yeah. compost and they shoot like this. But where, where you can, I would always buy them in the green. Right. It, uh, you, you always have a you successful... You just plant them out at that stage then? Yeah, you can take the pot off and plant yeah. them in a group like this and then that will naturalise and spread mm. and you'll get uh, uh, a fantastic display uh, oh. late uh, January uh, right the way through to uh, the end of uh, February. The oh, snowdrop, so. Okay. so plenty of colour for February time and we'll come on to jobs of the month then Mark. Very straightforward uh, jobs for uh, February are 
um, cutting back autumn fruit in uh, raspberries right down to ground level. If you don't do that, you won't get fruit uh, later on in the season, so it's very important to do that right now. Uh, deadheading any uh, winter bedding that you may have. If you've had, planted any uh, uh, pansies earlier on in the season, very important to whip the dead heads off and that'll encourage uh, new uh, flowers. Also, start to get uh, ready to uh, buy uh, seeds, you know, looking seed catalogues uh, ready for the sowing uh, around about this month and uh, start to put down uh, manure on plots, allotments. Um, uh, towards the end of this month, at the end of February, you can start to put down uh, things like fertiliser, rose fertiliser and shrub uh, slow release fertiliser around plants. So all those kind of jobs, it's a lot of shopping and things oh. like that. Um, and uh, just make sure that you have pruned back any old winter flowering uh, plants that's uh, gone past the best. If you prune them back, uh, immediately after flowering then you get very very mm. good flowering for the uh, for next season so lots of things to do we're just starting to come into that really really busy time of the year uh, for gardening where you're really preparing for the the season ahead just, like, just go for flowers what about vegetables when do you start to... vegetables are always a little bit later, later. on um, mm. the first uh, the first mm. few vegetables are things like broad beans uh, they'll be started about about March time the same with sea potatoes right. start uh, chitting the uh, sea potatoes now and you put them in the beginning of March oh, so right, okay. uh, sort of you now is in February is always about planning what, busy time then <laughs> looking uh, looking uh, ahead of what you really want to do now yeah. I've got the uh, allotment which you do yeah. which we will feature uh, on uh, green fingers yeah. and and have clips from uh, the allotment uh, I'm preparing there and planning ahead for things that I'm going to grow um, very important to grow on an allotment things that you're actually going to eat mm. a lot of people grow lots and lots of runner beans and things like that and then they have too many and they yeah. start giving them away and it seems a shame so I'm going to be planning ahead thinking about things that I'm going to eat and yeah. going to enjoy and uh, and that's really what February is all about so there's lots of things lots of things to work out do some shopping uh, maintain tools as well very important yeah. to have all the right tools and maybe have a look at the tools if they're past the best buy some new ones always invest in stainless steel where possible yeah. it makes the uh, digging and, uh, and gardening a lot easier how do the um, viewers get in touch with you? Uh, well, the normal way, they can either contact me here at Mark Eaton Garden Centre. We've got the uh, telephone number on the screen now. Uh, if you need a very quick answer to a question, what we've got in stock, that yeah. kind of thing, give us a call. Uh, likewise, you can uh, email uh, Mark Eaton with any problems you've got, any pictures you've got, uh, that kind of thing, and we'll, we'll get back in touch with you straight away or they can contact uh, Burton TV um, on their email address and uh, again any pro problems that they've got in the garden anything they want to identify in uh, videos um, yeah. or, uh, or pictures please send them in and we'll answer those on on future programs of Green Finger Tips. That's lovely Mark so I hope you've enjoyed this edition and we'll see you next time. Uh, I'll do Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> oh my God! I say Rip Van Winkle, and then she starts. <laughs> what, what, what is up with you? <laughs> yeah. That's two new You're varieties. You're bigger one. <laughs> that is, but that's the biggest I've got, madam. It's the biggest I've got. Oh. <laughs> Be <Bit> disappointed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Answer the month is. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to be back a bit? Yeah, just <laughs> standing next to the. <laughs> right, how close can you get to each other? Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> I want to. Well, I need what? you. I need you to group ish. Group. Just too close. <laughs> 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 Just hold something between you. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you can't say things like that in this day and age. <laughs> Just, <laughs> what? I hope you get plugged. And uh, raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
raspberries. I was. <laughs> that was a raspberry. Yeah, it was. That was a winter flowering raspberry. That was <laughs> fruity, not flowering. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, we uh, we're talking uh, about fruit and it's uh, raspberries. Any autumn? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> <You're spot>. Sorry. <laughs> I think we just put that in. <laughs>